like New York in June. How about you? I like the Gershwin too. How about you? I like a fireside when a storm is due. I like potato chips when light and butter trips. How about you? Wow, a bit of a different introduction today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Parent Solution. In case you're wondering, yes, you are in the right place. <laughs> today, we had a little bit of a different introduction because we have a very special guest with us. His name is Rick Dallarata. Now, Rick is a highly acclaimed and now a legendary jazz artist, composer, entrepreneur, and a philanthropist. Him and I have definitely had some interesting conversations in the past. Now, what he has done is he has been able to achieve something highly desirable, but it's been difficult to find uh, or obtain, and he's turned his adversity into six unprecedented achievements as a worldwide peacemaker. He's done this through his benefit concert series that has helped over 850 of the world's most outstanding causes, educational programs that bring music back to the schools, and instrument donations to underprivileged schools, children, and adults in what is now considered to be, by many, to be one of the most significant cultural events of our time. Rick, I'm honored to have you here today. Super excited. And thank you for that lovely introduction of music and lovely jazz music. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Uh, what it was is, you know, I don't know when this will air, but just so, you know, viewers know, right now it is a June day in New York. So this song, which I rarely ever play, but it's a song about New York in June, and it's called How About You. And what I usually do to to let people know, you know, I mean, you can start jazz for peace. Jazz is the first word in jazz for peace. So I always think it's good for people to hear some sort of jazz to give them kind of a launching pad of what we do, because it does all come from jazz, the music, the art form of jazz. And then we use that combining with a fundraising model that we have called an empowerment tree 
to create peace by helping the world's most outstanding causes. We feel the path to peace is to help those who are helping others. So we try to help those outstanding causes. So what I do is I started with this little song about New York in June, where I happen to be right as we speak, and then segue into something that is just made up. It's on the spot. And it stands for, it's called Free JA, which is a kind of a stance that we're taking on freedom of speech and things like the bombing of innocent civilians and the right to journalist integrity, things that are related to this Julian Assange situation, you know, rights and, and privileges that we're very concerned about. I don't want to see people lose them. And I don't think people realize how bad it would be to get, how hard it would be to get them back if they were ever lost. Mm-hmm. So it goes into that. It's a free improvisation thing. It's really supposed to leave the whole thing that I did completely at some point or other. But it was a little bit hard for me to get that melody out of my mind. So I, it kind of stayed with some of the tempo and some of, a lot of the little, a lot of the little elements of the last piece, piece kind of stuck around in my free improvisation. Well, it was beautiful. Thank you for playing. It may be June at the time of recording. This is airing sometime in the fall. So I'm sure people were gonna are going to love being able to hear this. I don't know what New York looks like in October, but I imagine New York in October is very different from New York in June. So a, a nice uplifting piece of summer music, as it will, <laughs> as it were, yeah. kind of reminds people of, of the beauty of, uh, of summer and of the world that we live in. Um, and speaking of the beauty of the world that we live in, I know that it's easy to be very negative these days. It's easy to always come up on a sort of pessimistic view of things. Talk to me a little bit about what inspired you to start your organization, what inspired you to found your organization, and kind of where your journey is and where it's taken you today. Sure. So, you know, a lot of people just, you know, I, mean, I was funny because I was just got off the phone with someone who was wanted me to tell him about the Jazz for Peace big band because there's been so many machinations of of Jazz for Peace since from it started until now with, you know, concerts I did solo just like this in places like Pakistan or Nepal where you just couldn't find a jazz musician in that country that I could pull, get on board with me, you know, and other things where I brought a band with me to a foreign place like I did in Rwanda or things where I actually had the Jazz for Peace big band, which is a whole slew of like 17 musicians on the stage, you know, supporting our program with their talents, you know. So basically, it started on the day, you know, you can say it started when I started playing music and when I started traveling and started learning that music, you know, is such an important part of solving problems, in my opinion, and just helping the world, making the world a better place. It cuts through all kinds of you know, barriers, any barrier that we have that we that's keeping us apart, music can cut through it and bring us together. Doesn't matter whether it's religion, whether it's culture, whether it's creed, race, could be anything. And we just come together through music and, you know, the American art form of jazz, which is spoken all over the world. So me as a jazz musician, here I was in New York City on the morning of 9-11. And I happened to get tipped off by a photographer who had taken pictures of me the day before. She called me from down on Wall Street where she had a, you know, her day job and tipped me off that something very crazy was going on at the World Trade Center. And I ran up on my roof where I could see less than a quarter of a mile away where I could just see the World Trade Center right in front of me and was just, you know, it was like walking into a movie. It was you know, a day I'll never forget. I mean, even people who weren't weren't here never forget that day. But I'll really never forget it because I really witnessed the whole thing. And from like a luxury box seat, you know, on a rooftop less than a quarter of a mile away. So all I had to show for my, you know, 9-11 day ordeal was a poem of words that just came out of me. I titled the poem Jazz for Peace. And I just been I thought I would just try to hang in and try to live up to those words of that poem for as many days in a row as I could, see how long I could go. And I'm still at it. I'm still trying to live up to the words of that poem every day. And so I feel it's a privilege to wake up and try to live up to what it is you're supposed to be on this planet, you know, rather than try to get to the part in life where you can live up to what you're supposed to be, which it seems to everyone's always a derivative behind. They're always a step behind, you know, I'm going to do it as soon as I do this, as soon as I do that. So. When I wake up, I try to live up to the words of a poem called Jazz for Peace. 
That's powerful. That's powerful. Now, now I understand where the philan- philanthropist <laughs> attitude comes from, where that label comes from. Now I'm curious. Do you have the poem with you? Because now I'm yes. Oh, okay. I'd love if you read it. Okay, I can do that. What I usually do, believe it or not, is I will I will read it and then kind of do a free little accompaniment underneath it. So I'll do that for you we now. Would, we would love that. Oh. I hear jazz for peace. Coming through the trees And in my heart it fills me Like a celebration I see the light And I want to follow Inspired by the past contributions Of those who came before And laid the groundwork for us to build on in this universal language that is a gift for all mankind. And as we speak it, people are enlightened by the creativity and artistry that stands for peace. and intelligence that leads to reaching potential that we have in our soul so we can raise our total conscience and see that the gift of giving is our greatest privilege Jazz for peace. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And you, you created that. You wrote that on nine eleven. You know, it basically came out of me, you know, it was kind of like, I almost felt like I was giving birth, you know, my water <laughs> broke. Oh, be careful there, man. Be careful. <laughs> Don't make those. I change my pronoun. <laughs> but it was, it really was like that. It was just like the words were coming out because, you know, yes. the, the emotion of the situation was just bringing the words out of me. Right. So it wasn't, I wasn't really like Beethoven, like sitting there, you know. 87, you know, 80, 832 versions of da, 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 you know, just to get mm-hmm. to that one first bar of the symphony, you know, I right. wasn't struggling like that. It was just the words kind of flowed out. It's strange. It was almost like, like I said, I, I, it was, I, I gave birth to it in a sense. Like a, like a metaphorical, natural birth of, of uh, music. I know when right. we chatted before, you said that you, you really believe, and I would agree with you on this, you really believe that music is a stimulant of the intellect. And that was such a good quote that I actually wrote it down and, and it's in my notes here. You said that music, you really believe that music is a stimulant of the intellect. And, and I would agree with you. And it furthers your creativity, right? Yeah. Well, that's why I think it's so important in the schools and in learning and kids and they should be exposed to it. They should have the opportunity to pick an instrument, to learn an instrument, to be exposed to music in general, all forms of music, not just, you know, one genre or, or whatever mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. you know it starts i mean we everyone exposes children to the you know the nursery school the nursery songs and all that so they all know that it you know there's something to it but you know as the children grows keep let that music keep growing with them and stimulating their intellect you know really mm-hmm. yeah in a, in a non-biased way hopefully you know that's what music mostly does you know what i mean the the idea would be to have it be as free flowing as possible of course and I know that in today's climate in particular, the concern about 
specific indoctrination of certain narratives and and control of certain narratives, particularly in the education system with my business and what we, with what we help parents with, is something that's a challenge. So I appreciate that you that you said that you know we want to be able to introduce them to as many forms of music as possible, just as you would want to introduce a child to as many ideas as possible within a structured and guided environment, of course. Right. Well, the whole problem in our world today is really capture, whether it's regulatory capture in our society, you know, you're, the capture. And so, I mean, one of the greatest things you can do is expose people to something in a natural way because they learn and grow. You know, if you expose someone to classical music or, or jazz or whatever, but then then you go from the best to the worst when you have an agenda of the exposure and now you're capturing it and you're only exposing them to this you're you're delivering something that's going to indoctrinate them as you said that word you know what i mean now you're going from first to last you know what i mean it's like that's the worst thing you can do it's almost like us the difference between eating a salmon that you know lived its life running upstream in the wild you know what i mean or a salmon that was you know in a polluted river, polluted fish farm pond in Vietnam, you know, being fed food pellets from the Baltic Sea. You know what I mean? Like that's the complete opposite of the salmon that we know of, you know, that a bear would get yeah. in the Yeah. So that's yeah. the problem. It's like, you know, you, if you do it correctly, it's the greatest and it's an incredible stimulator of the intellect and inspires them. And, you know, that's why Jazz Beast brings music into the schools and, and wants to do that. We'd love to even come up to Canada and do it. But when you do it that way, it's the most natural and, and gives them the best chance. When you do it the other way, now you're, you know, now you're, uh, again, you're getting a toxic delivery. Right. Ooh, that, that's a good one. Toxic delivery. <laughs> yes, I would agree. Right. And the idea being that, you know, as a parent, you want to be able to introduce, I won't say expose, introduce as many concepts to your child as possible, obviously in an age appropriate realm. And in an right. age appropriate way, I think that music is one of the things that is, that transcends really all age groups. I mean, perhaps different styles of music are appropriate for different ages. I wouldn't necessarily, my personal opinion, I wouldn't necessarily recommend rock music <laughs> for like a baby, right? Something soothing and calming. Right now, that's my opinion, right? And by no means am I a professional therapist or like, you know, sound on the old or anything like that. But just, just the idea of music in general as something that transcends all age groups. And I'm particularly interested in what sorts of things you've been doing in schools. Do you want to talk a little bit about what sorts of programs you find about, what sorts of opportunities you have with children as it relates to music? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, the thing about it, so a lot of people have said, why jazz? Well, I mean, one reason is because I'm a jazz artist, but I do play all styles of music. But one thing about jazz, the art form of jazz, is it does have all of the things that are in my poem that, that you know, it, it has things like creativity is in jazz. There's individuality in jazz. There is artistry in jazz. There is intellectuality in jazz. So you're giving, you're exposing a child, you know, these concepts that they need to embrace anyway. You know, you want to you want to nurture a child's creativity and their artistry and their intellectuality and their humanity and all of these things can be nurtured through that. And we also just found that kids really took to the message of jazz for peace. Sometimes, I don't know, they have an intuitive interest in jazz for peace. I remember my little nephew, he was a little baby, and I was sitting at the piano, not a baby, but maybe like three or four years old, barely even knew how to talk, and he ran into the living room once where I was staying, I was visiting my parents, and he said, tell me about jazz, jazz for peace. He said, and I didn't quite hear what he said, I thought he wanted me to tell him about jazz, and they said, no, jazz for peace he wants to hear about. And his parents just looked at me and I looked at them like, where's this coming from? You know, but sometimes kids are in touch with the universe better than we are. You know what I mean? They've had less time to be blocked, to block themselves. And they have a natural, they just have a natural connection to things. But we've just done a lot of stuff with children all along the way, whether it's donating musical instruments to schools or doing live performances in schools. We have a video of us. One time, a, a teacher brought us out to Massapequa, Long Island, because yeah, Seinfeld, the guy, that, that guy Seinfeld, right? For the show? Seinfeld, yes. 
Jerry Seinfeld, I was going to say David, Jerry Seinfeld, yes. he actually went to school. He grew up in massive people and he went to that school and the school is very proud of that. And they, they want to, you know, pride themselves in bringing up, you know, successful people, leadership, all that stuff. They take, so they wanted Jazz Reese to come out and they had, and, you know, do something for the kids, but they brought all the kids in for bust them in from all of the city. And so there's a video of us performing for like a thousand kids. I think we did three shows of like 350 kids each or something like that. And they, you know, brought them in on the bus and the kids just absolutely went crazy. And I thought, wouldn't this be, this should be going on every day. Some, every, somewhere in a school, somewhere, this should be taking place because the, you, you watch the video, you see how much the kids love it. You might even want to link that video in your show notes, you know, with your theme and all. So, I think you should, yeah. Because, to say. <laughs> you know what? Don't take my word for it. Look at the video. The kids are going absolutely crazy and they yeah. absolutely love it beyond what I thought. But I not believe it. That I, what? I said, I believe it. Yes. And you know, the thing was, as I traveled, some of the most incredible ovations I got were from large groups of kids that they would bring me. And a couple of times, like I remember one time I was in Pakistan and I was in a car that was like a mafia type of thing. You know, it looked like John Gotti's car or whatever, because you couldn't see in. <laughs> you could only see out. And they put okay. me in that car because they just didn't want to attract any Western, you know, they didn't want to attract what attention from a Westerner in Pakistan right. at this time, especially the, the time that I was there. It was actually during a time when Bo Berkdahl was being held captive, the, the, the guy who walked off the reservation. I was only yeah. a few hours from him. I didn't know that. Otherwise, I'd probably run for the hills. But, you know, <laughs> that was just, that was what, what was happening there. Yeah. And uh, car, they had me wear, because I had already been to Nepal, and uh, I was wearing clothes that I had got, that people got me in Nepal. They bought me, gave me mm-hmm. clothes, gifts. I was wearing those clothes, which were of the region. So I was regionally, you know, looking the looking you know like like everybody else and then i just snuck snuck me out of these cars a group of people and in and out of these places that were just jam-packed with kids kids that were being taught to read because of the work we were doing with this concert because uh most people don't know pakistan is literally 90 percent illiterate but i would go in there they throw all these flowers on me and i meet with them and talk to them and they were just so enthusiastic and another one that just comes to mind or off the top of my head as i was in kenya and this guy was just taking me around. He said, I want to know who you're helping. These are the people that are water, provide the water, meets them, meets them. And he's just meeting them one by one. And then they open this giant door of this giant kind of a barn or something, huge barn. They open the door and I walk in and there's an ovation like I've never received from anybody, you know? I mean, I don't even think I could get an ovation like that at the Super Bowl. I mean, it was crap. <laughs> I felt like I scored. The winning touchdown at the Super Bowl. That's what I felt like. I mean, it's unbelievable. And there were kids screaming and yelling. You know, I just, all I did was walk in there and I said, you know what? We've got to do this again because nobody's going to believe the, the enthusiasm. No one will believe. I'll never be able to tell anybody. So there's a video. If you ever come across a video or watch the video, just remember that's take two. That screaming of those kids is a take two. Because I had to do it all over again. Because I was like, could you just, you know, get something with your cell phone? You have a cell phone. I can just get it and send it to me. I've got to, yeah. we've got to have it for our archives. So, and, you know, and, you know, you talk, you, you'll see me talking to the kids and, you know, doing stuff with the kids and all that. And they just, you know, they love when somebody from outside their sphere comes in of course. and shows them that they care about them. You know, yeah. they just love to feel like, hey. This is a grown up who's like looking out for us. He wants the best for us. And they just think the world of it. Right. Well, music is, and I think particularly jazz music is, is on, on some certain level, it's inspirational. Right. Um, it is. Well, it, you know what? It, yeah. It jazz, the art form, we did a study on this because we wanted to put it on our website in case anybody ever, we don't want to just say something and then, you know, well, I don't know if I believe it. We want to make sure there's proof. And we did a study on it and, Jazz has a history of having a profoundly positive effect on people. I knew it anyway, but I just wanted to get a historical thing. And we ended up choosing the one we choose. There's a lot of them, but there's one, this guy named Charles Black. I think that's his name. And he's a white guy. His name is Black, but he's a white guy who grew up as a racist by default in the Midwest. You know, he didn't know he was racist, but he was growing up with all of the, you know, seeing all the signs, colored people, this, eating the back of the bus, all that. You know, he just, 
you just naturally, it, it's by default. You know what I mean? So now he's in some kind of a school dance or something where you're supposed to go and meet, maybe meet your future wife or whatever, you know, and that's what he's supposed to be doing. And yeah. he's, he's not, you know, he's not on the, he's not on the reservation with it because he's stuck on this trumpet player in the band and he's watching this trumpet player in this band and he's convinced at the end of it that the trumpet player was a genius. That's, he has decided that, you know, how kids get a certain age and they want to make a decision and they want to put their stake in it, like this, their stake into the moon or whatever and say, yes. this is what I have figured out on my own. This is me that thought this. No, yes. no. he decided that this person playing the trumpet was a genius and nobody was going to tell him otherwise. Here's the problem. The person he saw who just happened to be Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong was the trumpet player in that band. Happened to be Louis Armstrong. Thinks he's a genius. And now he walks out into a world where it's like, well, wait a minute. How could a genius not be allowed to vote? Right. You know, how could mm -hmm. a genius, you know what I mean? And now, and it's just a whole list of things that it's, does it make sense to him that it could be a genius? Well, right. he ended up, his life was so profoundly affected by that, that when they talked to him at the end of his life, after a slew of accomplishments, he ended up being, you know, uh, an elected official, I believe a governor or a senator, maybe even both, and doing a lot and involved with a lot of bills that had to do with, you know, humanitarian related bills for our country. He was actually one of the one of the, uh, what do they call them? The authors of Brown versus the Board of Education. The author, he wrote the famous Brown versus the Board of Education. I haven't read it, but I know it was real famous and he wrote it. At the end of his life, they said, what do you, what a trip to you, why did you achieve all so many things? And, you know, the other kids in your class, you know, just were normal people, did fine or whatever. Why did you? And he just, his answer was jazz. So we use that as for, but, so you don't know. Sometimes you could have a profoundly a positive effect on one person just from that, from the presentation of that art form. And I think that's really, I, I mean, I think that's a really good note to um, discuss and talk about and, and be a part of because I think that it, like jazz is one of those types of music. And, and I mean, I said this before, music is one of those things that is just universal. Right. Different styles of music, different ideas of music, but everybody recognizes music. Right. And while jazz may not necessarily be everyone's thing, <laughs> it is something that is, it is, a, it is an older form of music. I would say that most people know about. I mean, I'd say most people enjoy for, for the most part. I, I will hope. I definitely enjoy jazz. You know, the thing is, there are people that love jazz and they love all styles or they understand all styles. But there are people that think they don't like jazz because they heard one style of jazz that they didn't like, you know. Right. And mm -hmm. I once had a couple of people come up to me. They were parent. They were parents of a relative, like a sister-in-law or something. Someone married into our family, and I met their parents, and they just wanted to make it known, like they, we don't, you know, we. I know you're a jazz musician, all, but you know, we just we don't let we don't like jazz. They said. I said, wow, that's interesting. And they were older people. I said, now, but so you mean you don't like Louis Armstrong? Oh no, we love Louis Armstrong. Well, you don't like Artie Shaw? I actually played, I was the pianist in the Artie Shaw Orchestra. I was telling this guy in the bone just before this thing. We love Artie Shaw. We, talk, we love Artie Shaw. Okay. You don't like Nat King? Oh, we like Nat King Cole. I said, and there was one other one. I said, oh, I said Frank Sinatra. Oh, we love Frank. I said, bam, you like jazz. I don't know what you're talking about. You've liked everybody I said. Who don't you like? And then they told me some story. They heard some people, you know, just wailing away at some kind of a thing that was probably over their head a little modern. And, you know, mm -hmm. understandably so. I might not have even liked it myself. I don't know. I'd have to hear it to see if even I liked it. But the point mm -hmm. is, they heard something they didn't like, and they're going to blame the whole art form. You know, give me a break here. There's yes. a, probably a form of jazz that you like. There's an entry point for everybody. I don't like Oh, you're really wearing me out here. I mean, I understand what you're doing, but, you know, give me a break. You know what I mean? I'm not, I want to have a little fun. I want to enjoy myself too, you know? So I understand. I relate to people and how they feel. What I want to do is I, I think it's on my website without abandoning the art form of jazz. I want to entertain you. I want you to have a good time. I just don't want to abandon, which is what a lot of happens a lot of times where the art form of jazz is, you know, abandoned. 
so that you have a great time and order a lot of drinks. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to keep that art form in the, in the mix. <laughs> of course, of course. So on that note, actually, tell, tell the listeners today where they can find you, where we might be able to see some of your stuff. I'm sure if people Google your name, <laughs> if people look you up, they'll be able to find you. But go ahead and, and tell us where we can, where we can look you up and how we can contact you and find you. Sure. Well, you know, one great way to contact Jazz for Peace just to get the process started with you and Jazz for Peace, whether it's an outstanding cause that's in your town that you know of, or you're related to an outstanding cause, or you have, you're at a school and wants Jazz for Peace to come in and make a profoundly positive difference on those kids for their show, whatever it is you want to do. You could just, uh, it would be info at jazzforpeace.org. So you could just say, Hey, I watched Kimberly's show and Hey, this is blah, blah. And whatever you say, that is a seedling of which we grow our empowerment tree fundraising model. So it starts with a seedling, which is a comet. We grow that to roots and branches and all of the other things to help an outstanding cause be better funded, more publicized, more prestigious, more befriended, all of those kinds of things that are the branches of the tree. So now from there, there's, of course, our website where you can go like this. Says, hey, I want to check out a little bit more. That's that's jazzforpeace.org. And of course, you can find out with me if you want to check out my name, rickdelrod.com. And if you just want to have fun and go on your own little journey, like maybe that guy who, you know, came to the conclusion on his own that Louis Armstrong was a genius, you want to do that yourself, you can put Rick Delarada famous quote into Google and you'll see a quote that came up again. You know, I didn't sit around with a pen and paper trying to figure it out. I just off the top of my head, I said it in an interview and it just got lifted as a famous quote. So that comes up on all these famous quote websites where you can read what, you know, quotes from Einstein and Gandhi and this one and that one. But it also, from there, there's who the heck knows how many hundreds of links you can click on or whatever and go on a little journey. <laughs> yes. I call them the sidebar adventures. They're sidebar adventures. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes. Thank you so much, Rick. I really appreciate you being here today, taking the time out of your day um, on this lovely June day, even though, you know, this is going to air in October. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day today for all your time and your energy and your expertise and your and your energy. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Kimberly. Anytime.